everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic.com, and I'm joined by the East End Butcher himself, Shah Samuels. Hey, how are you? Are you lucky I got my glasses on? I've just seen the WS Wrestling's first episode. I'm on Cloud Nine. The yeah. journey I've been on from four people and a dog at a social club to potentially millions on ITV, I'm on Cloud Nine. What a journey. I've even got my glasses on. You know what? I'm going to take them off. You know, I don't give a shit. Um, so when we were watching that, I think some of the loudest reactions were your own. You were very, you seemed very happy to see very, the whole. I'm, proud, I'm like yeah. a proud dad. I'm not saying I'm the the daddy of British wrestling, but I'm a proud stepfather. If you get what I mean? Oh, like, okay. Yeah. You see guys like Alex Shane, you see guys Doug Williams, Johnny Storm, Jody Fleisch. They paved the way for guys like me, for guys like Rampage, for guys like Joe Hendry, for guys like Martin Kirby. So I feel like a stepdad. And watching that, I was on Cloud9. Mm. You know, I feel happy. I thought the uh, the presentation of it was superb. Obviously, you were one of the guys who appeared before the pilot episode on New Year's Eve yeah. a couple of years ago. On uh, I think it was on this morning. This or... morning. I was on Good Morning Britain. So Good Morning Britain. Yeah. I'm very I'm very attached to this project. I mean, I wasn't a, I wasn't um, try I wasn't tried to get um, stolen away by the other team. But, right, right. But even if I was, I'm very committed to ITV and very the WS Wrestling because this is an opportunity, a once in a lifetime opportunity. For British wrestling to truly get back on the map, mm. you know, um, mainstream TV. Every household in the country has access to WOS wrestling. We're not an internet subscription site. We're not an on-demand service. No, we're on every single television in this country. So that's the biggest platform to be on. Um, just on a more personal level, I guess your persona. I thought it was a persona. It just seems to be oh, you in real not, life. No, 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 no yeah. No, no. I'm just a horrible, loud, cockney <laughs> bastard, right? right? Excuse my language. No, I'm very, yeah, obnoxious cockney. I do apologise. That's all good, but you're the way about you, I guess. Maybe we'll translate particularly well to television because you are larger than life. Do you think that's how it's going to go? Do you think that's how you're going to come across? I, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I'm larger than life. I can't help it. I mean, as long as I'm on the platform, I watch myself on that screen. End of the day, I'm the loudest person on the show, I'm the most tanned person on the show, and I'm the most intimidating person on the show. So please, please, I don't give a sh if you're offended. Pardon my language. The East End Butcher is on Cloud 9. Oh my god. W O S Wrestling! Shah Samuel. Hello everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic, joined by a very merry Viper. How are you doing? Hi. You having a good time? Yes, I'm having a very good time. I'm a bit drunk. We are, we are, of course, here at the WS, WOS Wrestling uh, launch event. Uh, we just saw the first episode, and it was pretty damn exciting. Unfortunately, um, we didn't quite see you in action yet, but we will do very soon. Um, how have you found the whole experience? Um, honestly, like, it was difficult at first because it was so much a short, such a short space of time. Right. So it was very, very grueling, but I was really happy to be part of it because we were all tired, but we had so much on our plates. But it felt like a proper team effort, and to see the product of that now, like it's just I'm beaming with pride. Mm. Beaming with pride. Even from that first trailer, we got a sense that this was very different from the New Year's Eve event. But of course, you uh, were in a very sort of, I guess, impressive and privileged position because you were the first ever female winner of a WOS match. Uh, how did that feel? And and how I guess how are you going to carry that momentum forward into the new series? Um, do you know, it was very daunting because that's like, that's something that has a lot of gravity, right. you know, and like it was, it, I was worried about, am I the right person for this? Am I going to be able to live up to the expectations? Um, but moving into the new series, I kind of felt like, no, like you have, you don't, I wasn't like the leader of anything, but like, no, you are setting a standard and with me and the other girls on it, we kind of realised that we have to set the bar now. Like this is what's going to go out to the audiences across all of the UK. This is what they're for many people their first view of women's wrestling, yes. which is absolutely terrifying. But you know, <laughs> you, you have to like. Um, we just all wanted to do the best job, and I really feel like we got some of the absolute best girls in the UK for it. And I really hope everybody likes what we put on. Fair enough. Um, now, obviously, you uh, spent some time over in WWE as Piper Niven in the May Young Classic, and you had, I think. Probably one of my favourite matches of the tournament against Tony Storm. Oh, I know. How oh, great. Um, and I sort of, like, watching that match, I sort of felt as though there was some British wrestling influence in that match. You were kind of exchanging, if I remember rightly, I think it was that match, you were, like, exchanging bridges and holds and that sort of thing. Have you always been a fan of the British style? Yeah, really, I, I really love British wrestling. I love the technicality of it. I love, like, the legitimacy of it. Right. But because of, like, being a bigger girl, 
it wasn't necessarily that people were like, oh, you shouldn't do that, but it was kind of like, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, like, it was something that, like, I don't really get a chance to showcase often. Um, so when I'm in a ring with somebody who can go with me on chain, I always like to dish it out. Like, I'm, like, I'm just one of these annoying people that's like, like, look at all the things I can do. <laughs> um, now, we don't want to talk, like, exclusively about your time in WWE, but I must ask what you learned there, because it must have been an amazing experience to be over there in Orlando. It was lovely, you know, like, they were so lovely. They took the absolute best care of us. And being in the performance centre was eye-opening. It's crazy. It was eye-opening. It was like, it's absolute madness. You know, you're just sitting there, like, oh, yeah, go and have your lunch. And then HBK's coming up, like, oh, hi, yeah, nice to see you. How you doing? You're like... Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. great. Thanks. And Brandy, I was like, oh, hey, Viper, a big fan of your work. And oh, because, I was like, oh. Sh the bed. <laughs> <laughs> the two Vipers finally meeting. Did he mention that at all? No, you know, every, like when I was there, everybody, everybody called me Viper. Nobody oh, called yeah, me Viper. Right, right. Everybody called me Viper, and everybody was super respectful. So That's everybody's good. lovely. Everybody's great. Um, and I guess finally, I suppose, what are you hoping most to get out of this experience? What are you most hoping to come across as, I guess, on ITV? Um, I mean, this is the thing. Like, for me, like, everybody's kind of talking about the differences between the two brands right? and for me it's very two different styles of wrestling and I think when everybody was putting this show together we knew there was different demographics that we all had to appeal to so for me like I did my little stint in Me Young and I really enjoyed it but I want to make wrestling for the wee boys and girls at okay. home that's, that's, that's what's important to me um, I want the grands and granddads to be getting their kids in going, you better get that done and eating. I'm not putting the WOS wrestling on the telly or you don't get that homework done, you don't get to watch WOS wrestling. I want the dads to be like, oh, she's a nasty one. What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what, um, like, that's what I want from that. Like, I want us to... I want us to be stars here and not have to travel to the other side of the world. Like I think British wrestling is so fantastic and so amazing and wrestling was born here so it should be as big here yeah. as what it is elsewhere. And that's what I want. I want people from Britain to fall in love with wrestling again because all the way from the 50s to the 80s this this was the place that wrestling you know, it was the most popular here. They had World of Sport back then. And it's a shame that it got taken off the telly and I won't get into that because I'm quite a the power on that right, but okay, right. um, I just want British people to fall in love with it again. Hello everyone it's Jack from Cultaholic.com back here at the WOS Wrestling launch event and I'm joined by Adam Flex Maxted. How are you doing? All good. Uh, amazing to see the first episode all come together. Yes. Um, obviously being a part of it, filming it and then seeing the whole production has been awesome. Uh, yeah. The atmosphere as you can tell is so high in the room and everyone's very pleased with it. Mm. When the show ended uh, the room literally burst into applause. Everyone seemed so excited to see I guess what everyone's been working on finally come together. Yeah, because over the three days, like everyone just worked for the show. No one was out for themselves. We wanted to be a success. We don't want just wanted to be ten episodes, and we we're just talking there that hopefully this can be the start of something that goes on for ten years. And there's thing, so yeah. much, you know, there's no reason why wrestling should be on TV in Britain, you know. Yeah. Um, personally, how was the experience for you? How do you find? Obviously, you're a man who is used, I guess, to the television cameras, being, yeah. a, being a former Love Island contestant. I have to mention it for the uh, Google traffic, of course. Everyone yeah. does. Um, but um, how did you find it? Did you find that transition easy to make, or was it a little bit daunting? Um, it, no, it definitely was daunting. I was definitely extremely nervous uh, going into it, um, because, again, for me, I still have the whole Love Island stigma. Right. I think a lot of people still just, oh, you're just that TV guy. So like for me, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just tweeted about that last night, actually, because really? he's got his own TV show now. Yes. And it's like he started on Real TV and now he's gone on to become one of the biggest names in wrestling. Yes. And it's very motivating and inspiring for me to see that happen for someone. But for me, I was just very honored to be a part of this mm. uh, with some of the best talent in Britain. Um, and, you know, hopefully going forward, it's going to just keep going. Yeah. Um, we saw you involved in a multi-man match. Um, I guess in a way, the pressure on the first episode is to introduce a lot of characters at once. But you particularly managed to kind of mug for the camera. You were kind of, you know, being a bit of an unscrupulous person yeah. in the ring and that sort of thing. Um, I guess with a, an audience who may be less familiar with wrestling or a more casual audience, that could really come across really well, would you think? That could really catch fire. Everyone could go, oh, we really hate him. Is that sort yeah, of the... that, that was my aim, to be the guy that, you know, if I'm popping my pecs, kids might laugh at that. Yeah, they might right, find that yeah. funny. Some women in the crowd might 
find me attractive yeah. and the dads are probably going to hate me <laughs> because they, they don't look like I look. Right. So for me, my character is I'm cool, calm, collected, I'm cocky, I'm very full of myself, uh, like a young Randy Orton, right. who I spend a lot of time watching, studying, uh, Bobby Roode, The Miz, like all those guys mixed together is kind of how I you know, try to perceive myself as well as the fact that I've done the reality TV stuff as well. So yes. if I'm ever doing a promo, I can be like, well, I'm a celebrity, I'm more, I've got more followers than everybody in this room, and there's just so many things that I can go off on, and the fact that I have the physique I have helps me as well yeah. to, to stand out and look, 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 look how I do. Of course, we know that wrestling is a, cos a cosmetic business. How you look really matters and can kind of dictate how you're perceived a lot, and I suppose that's particularly true of this, considering it's going to be on quite a primetime slot on TV as well. So I suppose... Not necessarily that you have to have the ripped physique, but but you have to stand out in some way, I guess. Yeah, as, but as you know, like wrestling has changed. It's not about, you yeah. don't necessarily have to be over six foot and yeah. look like a bodybuilder because there's so many talented guys that yeah. are under six foot, they're small guys and they can go in the ring. And I think the style of wrestling has changed over the years. Um, but with this, I think there's a, a real good blend of, you've got some body guys there, you've got the Will Ospreys, the guys that can do all the high flying stuff, and you've got the entertainers like Grado as well and things. So for the audience watching, I think there's definitely the perfect mix of, of everything. And finally, and I'm, I'm certain you've probably been asked this question a lot, but obviously coming from Love Island, you mentioned briefly the stigma. Do you encounter many obstacles with that within the wrestling industry, or do you feel like you maybe started to overcome those and make a name for yourself on your own back, I guess? Yeah. You know, when, when I first left the show, I met a lot of wrestlers that were like, oh, we expect you to be an absolute douchebag. Like, right, right. You know, they, and they openly admitted saying that. But yeah. um, the fact that two years on from Love Island, I'm now back on TV wrestling, yeah. I think is like a testament to myself, the right. amount of hard work um, and dedication that I've put into this. And again, for me, I know that I have a lot to learn and still a lot more to improve on, but I keep training every week and every match. I, I'm constantly asking for feedback to keep improving because, like I said, I know I have so much more to learn. and. Sometimes I feel like I'm getting thrown in the deep end with things because obviously the, the Love Island will draw and attract viewers and some people and it's kind of like I got to step up and as the weeks go on in this show I know particularly that I, I do, you know, because people spoke to me after and they said you really did so I'm kind of glad that people will hopefully see that as the episodes go on and I'll kind of break away from the Love Island stigma and people can be like, well no, he can actually wrestle as well and you know. Hello everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic.com here at the WOS Wrestling launch event and I'm joined by one third of the commentary team, So Calval, how are you doing? I'm so good, thanks for coming. That's all right, we were invited, it was great. Um, yeah, I know. Um, everyone we've talked to so far has said, the first thing they've said pretty much is, what a team atmosphere, what a great sort of, it was great to see it all come together after working so hard over the course of the tapings. Yeah. Um, from a non-wrestling point of view as well, is that the same, very much the same sentiment? Definitely, I think, you know, with, with any show, as you know, you're, you've been involved for so long, I feel like, you know, it, it's great to be on, on any show, but when there's camaraderie, when everyone's, you know, working towards the same goal. The thing is, too, you know, we're thinking about people that have been in independent wrestling for a long time, mm. but we're also factoring in ITV and sort of the TV people and wrestling people, because it is sort of a, a disconnect sometimes. Not in this case. Everyone gelled perfectly. Our producers were amazing. Our PR people are amazing. The wrestlers, who many of them I met before doing independent shows here in the UK, were amazing. Um, yeah, and then our, our announce team was, was great as well. Mm. So for that dastardly Stu Bennett. Yeah. Um, Don't even get me started. <laughs> now, we were talking to uh, Viper, actually, about the commentary team, and she said, she singled out your role. She said that, not, not to, like, doubt your wrestling knowledge at all, but you kind of sort of stayed away from the more technical language. Yeah. You were kind of more of a, I guess, an inclusive commentator. Yeah. Maybe new people watching it who aren't as familiar with wrestling could identify with it through you. And I hope that that was kind of my goal. Okay. So I, I talked to her actually uh, just a while ago about that, and I thought that was cool because, first of all, it's an honor to be a female commentator. It's never been done to this extent in, okay. in wrestling ever. But also, you know, I, I said to them in the meetings, I was like, listen, if you want a girl that, that just loves watching wrestling and that has physical reactions and, you know, big reactions to watching big moves, I'm your girl. You know, that's what I always do. Even in, in Impact Wrestling, where I was for nine years, I was there at ringside, just totally enthralled with wrestling. And I hope that comes across, you know, because I'm never the type of person that will ever be apologetic about being a wrestling fan. Okay. I have been, you know, wrestling obsessed since I was about 10 or 11 years old. And my family, I've, I come from a family of all women. We know nothing about sports at all. It was a really weird thing for me to get into in terms of my family. But I just loved the, the pomp, and, pomp and circumstance, the... Um, the theatrics, the storylines, and I loved everything that encompassed wrestling. So I think it's really cool that nowadays my role is to sort of be, 
you know, kind of the everyman or every woman yeah. in terms of commentary. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, you mentioned the dastardly Stu Bennett as well before. Yeah. Um, he kind of took a, not so much a bad guy role on commentary, more of a hardline realist kind yeah. of line. Uh, he wasn't very impressed with Grado at all. No. I actually thought when we watched the episode, and by the time this goes out, we'll actually have seen already, so I, I'm not spoiling anything, but sure. I thought he was actually going to cost Grado the match. I thought he was going to run in. Um, he didn't seem very impressed at all. I will say, you know, he does bend the rules, not in physical ways, but he does bend the rules in certain ways that he sees fit, which is what I had a problem with. Right. I feel like, you know, we're all there to watch the show and to commentate and to give our opinions and, you know, to give the viewers at home a more real experience as they watch it. But his, you know, I can't say that Alex and I agree with his views on the matches, on how he made decisions, his executive decisions. You'll see as the series goes on, I can't say that I always agreed with his controversial ways. Um, but I will say that you can't take away from his talent. It's kind of like we talk about Rampage. Like, I didn't agree with a lot of stuff that he did in the course of WS, but you can't tell me that he's super talented, he's charismatic, he has paid his dues in this business. You know, Stu Bennett, you know, not he's not here, like he can, I can stroke his ego for like one second. Don't, don't tell him that I told you this. Um, you know, I've been somebody who's watched him for years and I just thought, wow, he is so talented, he's so professional, he has kind of that strong voice where, whether you agree with him or not, he commands respect. He's very and um, yeah. he absolutely is, and, and I feel like, between him and then Alex being the play-by-play -play super professional and super entertaining commentator, and then me sort of giving some flair as, as kind of the, the every woman watching wrestling and, and just loving the excitement of it all. I think it's a cool mix. Mm. Now, obviously this is going out to a huge potential audience. It's, yeah. you know, every single home that owns a television has access to it. Um, do you think that it was, I, I know you're a very confident woman, but you were, were you a little bit scared? Were you a little bit nervous? Terrified in the sense that I never liked watching or listening to myself ever. I say to people that are not in entertainment, I go, well, have you ever listened to yourself back on a voicemail? Mm. Or, you know, it's not the best. Um, but, you know, I had faith in the product because, let's be honest, at the end of the day, no matter what we said, meaning Stu and Alex and I, the wrestling is, is what's going to bring this series home in terms of being impressive and being memorable and being compelling. Mm. Love that word you use. Yeah. Uh, that's why you're a pro, see? Uh, <laughs> I love that it's compelling and, and on its own, the wrestling is amazing. So um, what we did, I think, gave it some flair, but really the wrestling is, is what's cool. And the cool thing about it is there's the juxtaposition of sort of the nostalgia with British Bulldog Jr. There's, you know, you've got the superhero in Justin's size of, you've got the high-flying aerial assassin, Will Ospreay. There really is something for everybody, and the women's division is so in the forefront, it's going to be such an exciting division to watch, mm. that I think, you know, no matter what you like about wrestling, there's something for everybody, which is cool. Hello everyone, it's Jack from Colt, you're, you're right guys. It's Jack from ColtsHolly.com, joined by Yes and Reese and uh, Kip Sabian. Uh, the World of Sport launch party event, I guess. Yep. How are you guys doing? What what are they there? So good. I'm enjoying the green ones. Yeah, the green ones are good. Marshmallows, yeah, bro. What are they like macarons? No, no, no like marshmallows are like apple flavored though. How sweet is that, right? That's really delightful. Um, now we are here at the World of Sport <laughs> launch event. We found out that you guys are um, going to be a tag team. Uh, how did you find that? The sort of classic mouth and muscle, as I think Alex Shane or, Way or Stu Bennett put it on commentary. How have you guys felt teaming with each other? It's just really easy. Yeah, like, it came, like, came really naturally. We, you know, we found out we were teaming together uh, shortly before the before it was all filmed and stuff like that. So um, yeah, and then we just kept, we just got chatting, came up with some ideas, and it it just all seemed to flow as soon as we got in the ring. So yeah, no, like, I'm really happy with it. We've known each other for quite a while, but like never in depth. And then as soon as we found out that we were doing the team, we were like, right, let's let's start to get to know each other a bit better. But even up to like the first match, we still hadn't really gelled or whatever. No, we literally mean? walked out there, you know, for the first match and we had no idea how it was going to go. So to, to, I felt that once we got in the groove of the match and, and stuff, everything just flowed and clicked as a team and, and hopefully that came across well on the, on the show as well. It was like the second we got back from the match, we both just looked at each other and just went, there's something there, like there's definitely something here. So then obviously as the series progresses, for us it was this. You were learning, you were learning as you were doing it as well, I guess. Um, what's the sort of general atmosphere like backstage at w WOS, sorry, wrestling events? Sort of, oh no, oh. Five second rule. 
I don't subscribe to that, I'm afraid. Um, what's the general atmosphere like in the locker room? Is everyone quite optimistic? Obviously, we've seen almost a pilot episode a couple of years ago on New Year's Eve, but this felt a lot more wrestly, I guess, in a way. I think, like, we all just went into it with this. It's my popcorn, bro. We all went into it with this uh, sort of team mentality. Um, and from, like, the first day of filming, it was, it was really apparent that everyone that was on the team wanted the show to do well so we all worked for each other as opposed to the working for ourselves kind of aspect yeah it was it was it was a big team effort you know we all got together the first night when we were down in norwich got the whole roster together we had a big chat we were like look we've got the opportunity you know there's lots of other big big wrestling things going on at the moment but this could potentially be the biggest if we work together as a team we'll all come out of it looking better and that was that was the mindset of the whole the whole roster as we were going through the through the week, basically. Well, I was I was talking to somebody who said that it was like, almost like the, the backstage atmosphere was so good that it was almost like when you're a kid and you're dreaming of becoming a professional wrestler, it's kind of the, that's kind of what it felt like almost. Is that, is that accurate, would you say? Yeah, 100%. Like, while we were at the tapings, we were all just a team. Everyone watched each other's matches. So we had like a live edit on the go. So it wasn't like, oh, I've done my match, now I'm just going to disappear. Yeah. It was... I've done my match now let's go watch the rest and then when we came back from our matches everyone would be giving each other the feedback or congratulating each other and then even when we got back to the hotel everyone every night all we all met up and we all together, just have a few drinks and stuff yeah. like that so it was a real from day one to the, the, the day when we all finished up real team effort from the whole, there was no egos everyone checked their egos at the door I think everyone knew that if we went into it as a team obviously like I said we'd pull something special out of the bag definitely Adam just tuck it in there behind the camera. Um, uh, also, I guess this sort of sounds like um, kind of the aspect of wrestling mixed with... So it almost sounds like you were like a film crew, kind of, like everyone getting on and stuff. Um, but I suppose you guys seem to be a fixture now of the tag team division. Yeah. Um, do you think that tag team wrestling will... How do you think it'll get over on television, maybe with people who aren't so familiar with professional wrestling? Do you think they'll find it easy to understand? I think... The, sorry, um... I think the way that it's being presented on the show, as we obviously all just saw, um, I think it makes it understandable. Um, there's a lot of explanation to what's going on, and the style itself is very easy to understand, if that makes sense, as opposed to just here's what's going match, on, yeah. here's the tag match. There's a, there's a definitive division. As you saw, there's going to be eight teams involved in the, the title tournament, you know, and that's going to build... Over the coming weeks, you're gonna you're gonna start to see teams interacting with each other, knowing that they're facing each other in the in the coming weeks and stuff like that. So I think, on the whole, I think that we all did a really good job of portraying tag team wrestling in a high quality but simple way. So because you gotta have fans that they're not all gonna be wrestling fans, they need to understand the real basics of that's right. a tag and then going forward like that. So I think that the way that the show is put together and the way that the the tag teams are, have been introduced is, gonna, is definitely going to do that cool um, well yes and recent Kip's actually I have one further question because hit me up brother brother this one's for Kip I'm afraid only but we it's not we briefly oh. briefly bumped into each other when I was talking to Dave Bradshaw the nation's favourite play-by-play commentator yeah. and you were both arguing over who was better at Mario Kart yeah. and um, this one's for you Dave if you want to bring it bring it stop talking about it just bring it Dave Bradshaw thinks he can beat me at Mario Kart. It's a complete lie. He's got very long fingers. I can't yeah, but imagine you don't him being need long very, fingers. You got that's what I'm saying. He's going to be. Oh, you got he's me. going to be, got going to be hampered by his long hand, long fingeredness. This has been going on for years. Right. Okay. And he still, still, he just doesn't want to actually have the game. Oh, you've never, you've never actually no, raised each other. He's been talking about it for ages. I think there's a cultaholic. There's a live, live special right there. The actual, the, the race kit versus Dave. I agree. The big race. The, the big, big race. race. Well, you had his back, and if that isn't teamwork, I don't know what is. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Yes, and Reese and Kip Sabian uh, here at the World of Sport launch event. I've been Jack and Collaholic. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, and do not forget to subscribe and to join us. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you.